Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanna to chat about 10 ways that you can declutter faster. I know that everybody wants to have quick results, right? You wanna be able to just get the clutter out, not make it a big mammoth project that's going to be overwhelming and last for weeks or months or be ongoing. And while it may not be realistic to think that your clutter is going to immediately disappear if you've been building on it for years and years and maybe even decades, if you want some tips on how to get through a lot of these tasks and projects in the quickest way possible, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, if you're new here, my name is Mia Danielle, and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. The first thing that's gonna help you to get those fast results is to write it down. I know that this sounds kind of counterintuitive. It seems like it would take you longer to take the time to write down what your plans are for your space or to write down the goals that you have for your decluttering projects. But there have been extensive research studies done by various psychologists Probably the most prominent study to date is by Dr. Gail Matthews from the Dominican University of California. Her findings were that you are 42% more likely to complete a goal or a project if you write it down. There is just something magical that happens when you put your thoughts onto paper. They become real and oftentimes they become scheduled because you're writing them down onto a calendar or you're associating some kind of a date or time with them. Whether you're writing down your goals for a specific space or a goal for a specific box that you're going to be decluttering tomorrow, not only will it help you to complete the project at all and not fall victim to infinite procrastination, which I know that we can all somewhat relate to, but writing it down helps you to get clear and focused on what the end goal is. That clarity helps to propel you forward into taking action, and it keeps you motivated to the end result. Number two is to enlist help. Now that doesn't mean that you have to call all of your relatives and try to schedule a date for them to come help out. It doesn't have to be something quite that formal. It could be something much smaller, like having your significant other just help you carry a few boxes downstairs, you know? Enlisting help kind of gets the ball rolling. I do this even on a really small, minute scale, you know, like if we need to go to the convenience store, I'm more likely to make that trip and to do the thing if Matt's coming along with me. Just like, just having that extra companion, that extra, well, somebody else is going too, so now we need to get up and we both need to start moving, you know? It's like you keep each other in motion, right? So just enlisting help, even if they're not doing much, even if they're doing nothing besides carrying a box and standing with you, it's getting that ball rolling and adding a little bit of accountability to the mix at the same time. So it can be really powerful just to enlist a little bit of help from at least one other person. The third way to help you really speed up the decluttering process is to use what I call the process of actual selection as opposed to what I call the Thunder X method. Now, a couple of weeks back, I did an entire video on this. You can watch the whole thing right here. But essentially, I'm talking about the only two ways to minimize your stuff, which is the name of the video. And the two ways to minimize your stuff are to do what I call the Thunder Eggs method, where you're just like chipping away at the clutter, chipping away at the clutter. If you know anything about Thunder Eggs, then you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, watch the video. <laughs> but you're chipping away at the clutter, and then you're revealing something that's important. So essentially, removing the excess to find out what's important. And you probably have seen a quote or a meme or something like that somewhere online that says something to that effect. Essentially, you're removing the excess and getting down to the importance by doing that. The problem with that is that it can take so much longer because in the process of chipping away at the excess and focusing on the clutter itself, you can get trapped in the different pieces of clutter. You can get trapped in memory lane or in the different emotions or confusion, or maybe I'll need this in the future. Like all of these thoughts and stories that we have about all of our stuff, can be really limiting and they can really slow down the process or bring the whole thing to a halt. So instead, I recommend that you use this process of selecting. Selecting the belongings that you know you're gonna need for the purposes of any given space, which you should ideally predetermine. Removing those things that you're going to keep and discarding the rest. This way you're not getting trapped in the clutter and it really speeds along the process. Number four is to forego selling. 
Now, I'm not opposed to selling. I keep offer up on my phone. I've even started using Facebook Marketplace, which I've had a lot of luck with. Um, I'm all for getting some money back for your items if you're able to, but it's not the fastest way to get things out the door. So if you're looking to make some really quick progress and to not get trapped for a couple of weeks with a couple of boxes of stuff that people may or may not buy, then just forego selling, you know, find a place to donate the items instead. Find somebody who can use the things that you don't need anymore and save yourself that time. Because while you may get $20 from something that you sell on OfferUp, it may not necessarily be worth the time that you're going to invest taking the pictures and posting it and reposting it and following up and meeting people and, you know, having people over at your home, however you choose to do it. So if you forego selling, you're just going to save yourself more time. The fifth way to declutter faster is to do what I call organic decluttering, declutter organically. This is something that I recommend for people who have very limited bursts of energy throughout their day. Maybe they have medical issues or just aren't able to mobilize quite as much as they used to. Or, you know, maybe they're working full time and only have 30 extra minutes every day to devote to really getting out the clutter. So for those people, I recommend something that I call organic decluttering, which essentially means that you're decluttering as you go through the flow of your day. For example, if you had stairs in your house and you have a box of things that you need to declutter and move down to the garage downstairs, you could naturally wait until you're going downstairs anyway and bring that box with you and kind of move things along organically in steps. If you're cooking in the kitchen, while you're waiting on the water to boil, you could go through the junk drawer in the kitchen and kind of tidy it and set it aside. While you're standing in your bathroom, after you take a bath or before you brush your teeth, you know, just opening your medicine cabinet and pulling out any facial or hair products that you're not using anymore. That would be an example of organic decluttering. And you can make it as minute as you want or as big as you want. The whole idea is that you're not having to think about it. You're not having to necessarily schedule it. You just have this agreement with yourself that every time you move from one zone to another, you're going to try to take at least one piece of clutter with you or arrange at least one tiny little section. One thing that's been studied is that adding a sense of urgency, some kind of internal time pressure, can help to increase results and greatly decrease procrastination. So for people who refuse to pull the trigger or are slow to act or like to mull over and think about things for months before they actually take any action to do something, adding some kind of urgency to the mix, some kind of internal time pressure helps to decrease that procrastination and increase results. One way that you can do this is to set a timer. So if it ever sounded silly to you that people recommend setting a timer for five minutes or 10 minutes and then decluttering as much as you can, and I can understand how that might sound silly because you might feel like, well, there's no way that I could finish what I'm doing. The reason that people recommend that you do that is that it does add that sense of internal urgency. And even if you go beyond the timer, that's totally fine because at least at that point, you're working off of momentum and flow. But the goal is to get started with that internal urgency, adding some kind of parameters and then rocking and rolling. You know, I think it's interesting. I use a lot of productivity apps and task apps and different kinds of timers. And one of the ones that I use frequently is called the Pomodoro timer. And the reason that the Pomodoro technique works so well, and people talk about it all over the place, if you Google Pomodoro technique, you'll see what I'm talking about. Essentially, it's where you work for a set amount of time, like 25 minutes, and then you take a five minute break. And then you come back and you focus down for another 25 minutes, and then you take a five minute break. And then the next time you take a longer break. And so it's chunked down so that you're not just draining yourself doing these big, long projects with no intermission. And even though you're taking more breaks, it's so interesting that it actually causes you to cut down on your time because the time that you're investing is so focused. And even on that app, it has the option to keep a ticking timer in the background which I turn off because I think it's a little annoying because I get a little too anxious when I hear that, like, oh, I need, I need to go faster, I need to go faster. But it's effective. Hearing that timer does make you want to go faster. And so that's a similar idea to just even setting a little timer on your phone, going through a drawer in the house, and then using that as internal pressure and urgency to help move the needle forward. Number seven is to actually recharge first. I think that this one is way overlooked and underutilized. And it's honestly one of my biggest secrets for getting things accomplished is that I have to make sure that I'm in the right mindset before I even get started. And it's like I tell my students, if you go in there with a mindset of, oh, this is overwhelming. Oh, this is going to take all day long. Oh, I better get comfortable because these clothes are going to take me hours to go through. When you go into it with that mindset, 
your body takes actions that go along with that mindset. You do sit down more slowly. You do move through things more sluggishly, right? Uh, you're not as fired up to move through the process. So getting yourself in the right state of mind. And that could mean like taking a walk outside. It could mean like doing meditation. If you're into meditation, reading a couple of pages or chapters from a motivational book, something that helps you to feel strong and empowered and actually feel fast. Because when you feel fast, you are faster. It's funny how that works, but it does. Somebody who likes to run or who maybe is prepping for a marathon, they're not going to play some slow classical music, most likely. While they're running, they're going to play something that gets their heart pumped, that's going to make them want to move their body and move their body faster. Um, and it's the same kind of thing. If you're wanting to move faster through some of these tasks and projects in your home, get your mind there first and your body's gonna follow suit. I have to say though, you know, being pumped is awesome and that's great for moving fast, but sometimes it's not the pumped that you need, it's the clarity and the ease that you need, right? So getting yourself in a mindset of ease, of, you know, I can break this down. It's not gonna feel so heavy. You know, I feel good about this. This is gonna feel really nice. And pulling that ease and getting all that tension out of your back can also help you to move more swiftly. Either way, you need to get your mind right before you start the project if you're not wanting to waste your time. Number eight is to remove distractions, especially visual distractions. We can easily get distracted. We have our phones that are constantly blasting off different notifications. If you have the TV going on in the background, now all of a sudden you're zoned into some program that you weren't intending on watching, but now it's got you all sucked in. Uh, it can be really easy to draw yourself away from whatever task you're currently doing. And so removing those distractions can save you hours of time, like actual hours of time. Because when you're distracted, your attention is still focusing on something. You're not even realizing how much time is passing. It's like this void that just expands and expands. And before you know it, half the day is gone and you haven't completed anything just because of the distractions. So simply putting your phone upstairs on the charger and making sure the TV is turned off could save you hours in the process of decluttering. Number nine is don't get too comfortable. Now, if you want to have a long, leisurely, comfortable time of going through your belongings and maybe get a glass of wine and play some music, that's totally fine. There's no shame in that at all. But we're talking about how to declutter faster. Sometimes I won't even let myself sit down. I'll be like, nope, I'm only investing five minutes in this and I can stand for five minutes because it's not going any longer than that. So like not letting yourself get too cozy, too comfortable, giving yourself too many of those feel good things to do while you're in the process of decluttering is gonna help to move the process along more quickly. So do what you will with that. And number 10 is to give yourself a countdown and then rip the band-aid and get started. This reminds me of Mel Robbins, like her big thing is count down from five and then do it, whatever it is you're wanting to do. If you wanna make the business call, right? Count down from five and then just pick up the phone and do it. We waste most of our time at the beginning. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down to write a blog post or to record one of these videos and I just drag out the whole intro process for like three or four hours and then I sit down and record and it takes me 20 minutes. We tend to do that. Getting started is the hardest part. So giving yourself a hard countdown, whether it's counting down from five or counting down from 10 and just agree with yourself that whenever I reach one, it's go time. Cut out that procrastination and all of that pre-work. So hopefully these 10 things will help you to get motivated to just get some things done and move along more quickly and not think of the whole project as being one big mammoth overwhelming thing because that type of mindset, that type of thinking is only going to make it take longer. 